When I had my MRI scan, obviously in the back of my mind, I was sort of hoping that nothing unusual would show up. But what happens when your brain starts to do something it shouldn't? Epilepsy is a common neurological condition, the main feature of which is seizures. The brain contains around 100 billion excitable cells or neurons that send electrical signals to one another. Other neurons dampen down this excitability, but when there's an imbalance between the neurons and large numbers of them fire at the same time, a type of electrical storm occurs in the brain, which results in a seizure. UFM DJ Rick O'Shea had his first seizure when he was 16 years old. It was quite dramatic. It was a Christmas day. I had been playing uh, board games with my brother. I was 16 and I was at home and I stood up and my mother tells the story about how I got a strange look on my face and I fell over and took the Christmas tree with me. And that was it, seizure number one. No history of it in the family and I woke up in, uh, in St. James's Hospital. That must have been quite scary for your mum. Yeah, they had no idea as to what exactly had happened and as to whether it was going to happen again. There are people who, even though they are medicated and medications are changed and moved, that they have seizures five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirty times a day. And for some people, they uh, can end up in a situation that's known as sudden unexplained death in epilepsy, where you simply have a seizure and you just never come out the far side. I'm on medication every day, I have been since I was 16, but I'm medicated to the point where the last time I had a seizure was over three years ago, three and a half years ago now. And that's the best possible outcome for me that I can have from this situation. Driving is a problem. I only got my driving license three years ago because I'd attempted to learn how to drive. I knew how to drive on a number of occasions, but I'd keep having seizures, so that knocks you back off the road um, for a year at a time. Attitudes to people with epilepsy have not always been positive. In medieval times, it was seen as evidence of demonic possession and led to people being burnt at the stake. Thankfully, it's a lot different these days. <laughs> um, I think attitudes have changed, certainly in the decades since I was originally diagnosed. I mean, it, it was something that wasn't really talked about at the time. These days, I like to think that, I mean, through the work of Epilepsy Ireland, which is the, the charity that I'm involved with, they spend huge amounts of time going into schools uh, talking to teachers and to pupils and trying to just get the word out there of exactly what it is people should do if, uh, if they see somebody having a seizure. What would you like to see in terms of research in the next few years? Ideally, anybody with epilepsy will tell you that they'd love to see a one pill that you can take in the morning and you never have seizures again, but as to if or when that will ever happen, I don't know. Rick is one of nearly 40,000 people living with epilepsy in Ireland. It's one of the most common neurological conditions and yet remains hugely challenging to scientists due to the highly complex nature of the brain. At the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Professor David Henschel is investigating one particular branch of epilepsy. The main type of epilepsy which we look at here is temporal lobe epilepsy. This is actually the most common form of epilepsy that we, we see in adults. And uh, it involves a part of the brain, uh, the side, the temporal lobe. And this part of the brain is involved in sort of processing sensory information. So things that we see, smell, touch, and also certain types of memory. Tracy Barton's three daughters have all been diagnosed with epilepsy. Twins, Hannah and Emma, both have temporal lobe epilepsy, which requires careful monitoring and medication. Emma was diagnosed when she was two and a half in 2008, and Hannah was diagnosed when she was four in 2010, and Sarah was diagnosed with epilepsy when she was six. To be honest, and to put my hand in my heart, I hate it. I hate epilepsy. It's in the back of our family. It's always going to be there. It, it, you can never have a warning of when it's going to jump forward on you. It's, you know, everything's motion along fine and before you know it, the seizure will pop back in and then everything gets thrown up again in the air. You're constantly, as a parent, constantly watching. And it could be any time that it can come. It, you know, you could be swimming, you could be in the bath, you could be in the shower, you could be getting out of car, getting out of bus, walking, anything at all. And it can just strike. There is no pattern as such that it will happen. With the girls, I try and keep them that they'd have a regular bedtime. Tiredness can play a huge factor. And, allowing seizures to creep back in. So we do try and have 
a steady routine as much as possible, obviously. They're only children and they shouldn't have to be, you know, going through this all the time. And unfortunately, it's something that's there. Despite Hannah and Emma both having the same type of epilepsy, doctors have been unable to find a common link between their conditions. David's research at RCSI is looking at the mechanisms that may underpin common forms of epilepsy. We think it has a lot to do with the, the activity of genes within the brain. In order for neurons to function properly, they need a certain number of genes to be active. And so what we know in epilepsy is that some of the genes that should be turned on are actually turned off, and some of the genes that should be turned off are actually turned on. And we think that it's this uh, change in, in gene activity within the brain that is causing this long-lasting sort of instability. What we've been interested in really is understanding what controls the activity of the gene, so what turns it on and what turns it off. As part of their research into gene activity in the brain, the team here at RCSI began to look at a specific process called DNA methylation. Dr. Suzanne Miller Delaney looked at whether this process was different in the brain of a person with epilepsy compared to someone without. If you think about it, every cell in your body has the same DNA in it. But what makes a cell a heart cell or a bone cell or a brain cell is the combination of which genes in it are switched on and switched off. So DNA is like the recipe book for your entire life. And if you think of it that way, if you think of it as a recipe book where each page of the book has the recipe or the code for a gene on it. DNA methylation is like paper clips holding together some of those pages so that the recipes for those genes can't be read and the genes can't be switched on. And tell me, how does this relate then to your research in epilepsy? So we know that DNA methylation is important in some diseases like diabetes and cancers, but we don't know about epilepsy. So what we did was we took samples from patients with epilepsy and look at the DNA methylation profile of those patients and see was there any differences between people who had epilepsy and control samples. We had 14 brain samples. Now five of those were control and nine of them were from epilepsy patients. Now to me that sounds like a very small sample size. Yeah, <laughs> it is small but we looked at thousands of areas of the genome in those samples. So we looked at over 30,000 areas of the genome and what we found actually was when we looked at the, the epilepsy patient samples, they were kind of consistent in their results, so we didn't need an awful lot more patients. This type of painstaking analysis of brain DNA had never been done before, and the team at RCSI made some significant discoveries. A lot of the genes that we, we found in this study were actually genes that hadn't been previously associated with epilepsy. So these could be novel targets for drugs to treat um, people with seizures that can't be controlled. So all the time we're finding out more and more and being able to understand more and more about the differences between patients in epilepsy. So we're optimistic that if we can understand what turns genes on and off within the brain of a patient with epilepsy, that we might have new types of drugs that will act really on what's underlying the disease itself. And by doing that, we may be able to, to uh, get much further into stopping seizures occurring or perhaps even e curing epilepsy. Research is unbelievably important, it's crucial. There's a lot of medications that will help the majority bring their seizures under control, but unfortunately for some minority, and it might be a large minority as well, they cannot get seizures under control. And it's such a major strain on your life, on your relationship, on, mental, on their mental health. It's just crucial. Research is really crucial. And what Professor Henshaw is doing is just, it'd be brilliant that they'd be able to find DNA, DNA markers in brain tissue. And then obviously the next step to then try and bring some medication in line with that would just be, be amazing for anybody that has epilepsy.